Remember sliding your cursor around the screen, click click clicking away, looking for clues, finding objects to stuff in your inventory, and talking to everyone in sight for hints on what to do next? Point and click adventure games were prolific on PCs in the 90s, though they took a back seat to shooters and strategy games over the next decade. But the genre has recently made a big comeback. Newer games such as Broken Age or modern day remakes like Rim Fandango Remastered prove that point and click adventure games are still in demand. Time Stories is a modular board game. You can even call it a board game system in which up to four players go on time traveling adventures together, looking for clues, finding objects to stuff in their inventory, and talking to everyone in sight for hints on what to do next. The core set of Time Stories has the board, markers, and tokens you need to play any adventure within this franchise, but it comes with only one scenario, Asylum, that takes place in 1920s Paris. You must work together to prevent paradoxes in this timeline, as well as others that you can purchase separately, to preserve the greater good. Yes, you are time cops here. Strong, limber time cops. You'll begin each mission of Time Stories at the base, where you'll lay out these cards and find out your team's objective. By reading the back of each card, you'll fully know your team's goals as you travel to 1920s Paris. You'll then wipe these cards and replace them with the first scene that you'll actually get to interact with. So on each player's turn, you'll take your token and decide which of these cards you'd like to visit. Are you interested in talking to the mean nurse over here, looking closer at this portrait, or maybe you wanna find out what's going on with this freaky girl? You'll take that card, turn it over, revealing additional story, finding items to keep, um, positive or negative encounters, or unfortunately, you'll maybe find nothing at all. As you progress, you're going to go visit different rooms and different locations, each with their own set of cards to explore. Progress through the story, solve the main objective, and get back to the future before time runs out. Oh, and if time does run out, don't worry. Everyone can just try the scenario again, using knowledge from previous experiences to make a more efficient run. Now let's see what the Going Analog reviewers think. All right. We're reviewing Time Stories, which, as we said in the intro, is sort of like a point-and-click adventure. So that's why we have two special guests. Well, Anna, you've been here before. You reviewed Level 7 Omega Protocol in our pilot episode of a special guest, Tim Schaefer, who Ooh, might know special. a thing or two <laughs> about point-and-click adventure games. Uh, I guess look them up, you know, if you see. If you find <laughs> yeah, because I forget myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then my old friend, Michael, you haven't been on the show yet. I'm not, but we're old EGM friends, and then we yes. have a lot of ex EGM guys on the show. Uh, we played through the base scenario that came with a game that's called Asylum, and then uh, you guys played that as well. Then we got caught up, and then we all played together the next scenario, which is sold separately, <sighs> the Marcy case. And then today we played a little bit of the Prophecy of Dragons. We didn't quite beat it, but we are sure. on a time limit. We got to film. Yeah. Who would like to start? Oh, I think you do. Okay. <laughs> I um, I was looking in the context of you know, adventure games and, and comparing to that the whole time. And it, the thing I like about it was that it emphasized one of the, I think one of the um, one of the things that's great about adventure games that don't people don't talk about that much, which is playing them with someone else. Like because people think of adventure games as like these solo experiences, but it was, I just remember playing text adventures with my dad, and like you'd switch off, mm -hmm. one of you get stuck, and the other one would sit down and play. And so they're actually these great multiplayer experiences, and I think. Um, this had that exploration of a story and locations, but we're all talking the whole time and talking about what we should do next. And I think that's a, a fun way to explore a story. To your point about the multiplayer experience, um, there, in, in the Marcy case, there was a scenario where there was a big red button mm -hmm. and some of us wanted to press it and some of us did not. I mean, I feel like everybody it. wanted to push it. Thank God that's... a certain responsible somebody was a time captain at the time. You're doing the same thing you're doing when you play a adventure game where you're trying to second guess a little bit the designer. Like, what have they done to us so far? Well, they always kind of baited us with these things that seemed like, you know, like to kind of rope a dope you in. And that, I don't know, a big red button that had pushed me. Yeah. <laughs> kind of felt like that to me. Exactly. But let's not say if it was, who was right. Well, yeah, we don't know. Let's just say two of us were right. <laughs> Two of us are wrong. I liken this to like a choose your own adventure book, right? Mm -hmm. You're just making choices. It's if you look at it as a game game, I'm not it's not a strong game per se, but it's just a really cool experience. Like 
The story <clears throat> is there. The art is fantastic. Every scenario we've opened up, the fan, the mm -hmm. art is just top notch, super professional, really slick layouts, and there's. Uh, it's just all professionally done, so it's like you're adding a game layer. You know what? One thing I wanted to say um, to counter that a little bit, because I went in thinking it was kind of like an adventure game. And the thing about adventure games is you have infinite time to just go anywhere you want and explore and things like that. And here in this game, because you have a time limit, it is not quite as like, oh, I'm just going to see what all of the content in the game is, talk to everyone, whatever. Like, that's kind of how you're thinking of being in that in that space this one reminded me a lot more of something like D, &D where you're um you have a g or d sorry dm like who's not actually here right now um that is the game that is like all the, the the way the game is set up and this is this is the thing that i really like about it is that it's very clever and how it sets it sets itself up as essentially a dm and it has all this awesome story and um, surprises and things like that. The thing that I really love is that the way that it sets the atmosphere um, and even like the rules it introduces each scenario like so like you mentioned there's a set uh, game set that has like a bunch of these tokens that are not even used in some in some of the uh, scenarios that you get and then in others it's kind of exciting every time you open the rules like oh these things have meaning now and they work like this. That time limit thing even though it takes away some of the chill thing people like about adventure games like oh they move at my pace. Mm -hmm. um, you still have, they're still relaxing in that you get all the time you want to think about it, but mm -hmm. your actions, that adds this whole new mechanic which makes you, gives you something to talk about around the table, like should we or shouldn't we? It's not just like, let's flip over all the cards. You right, know, it feels like right. there's something really at stake of all the choices you make if you go here versus here, mm -hmm. if you go together, because you only have so much time. So I think it, it does add a whole new mechanic. It is more yeah. stressful, but I think that right. was what makes the choices more yeah. worthwhile. And I think what's interesting too is that each each scenario feels really different. Uh, the art itself is different in each one, and so they all look different. <clears throat> um, like the fonts are different, and uh, I really feel like every time I play a new scenario, it's almost like a different game. Like for instance, we're playing this uh, dragon, the Prophecy of Dragons, and you can actually you, it's more emphasis on equipping items. Like my character is an assassin, and she can't. Uh, she can only wear a leather vest and she can has a, a ranged weapon. Whereas in, in some of the other scenarios, there, there was no armor. Mm -hmm. There was nothing really um, that was keeping you from like using a weapon. So, mm -hmm. And we even have, in this scenario, we have, shops. We have currency and we actually go yeah, shopping. Yeah, like yeah, I have, was shopping for a long Look at all there. this gold I have that I collected that I sadly did not get to buy I, anything. I wish we could say why, how you have all that gold. Well, it's just what happens <laughs> in life. You, get, you run out of time before you can spend all your money. So much gold. But, um, but yeah, it's it's really cool because like in this particular scenario, it it really does feel like an RPG. Whereas when we played uh, the Marcy case, it, it had like a different vibe to it. Just like the uh, the Asylum also has a different vibe to it. So I think it's like really amazing how they're able to make each scenario feel like a different game, even though it mm -hmm. is basically the same game with the same kind of components. Yeah, it's a cool system. And what's cool inside the box, and I set it down somewhere. At, Anyways, this box has all these different slots so you could save your game. Yeah, it's a very video cool. gamey thing. So, mm -hmm. if we're in the middle of a story and we're like, okay, we don't want to lose our track uh, track of what we're doing. Where are we going to be at next time? You can put everything away in certain spots so that you could continue exactly where you're at before, which is very clever, super smart. When you guys would read choose your adventure books, like you never would just read it once through in oh, one linear not. path and be done with it, right? Like. I used to like dog ear the the book or put like mm -hmm. little paper clips so I'd like I can do every possible path and then you end up doing that in this game because it's it's uh, almost impossible I think to beat it on your first try you're gonna run out of time so then you get teleported yeah. back to the present yeah. day they send you back with all the knowledge of what you first they learned. sarcastically berate your performance <laughs> Bob <laughs> Bob yeah dude okay. Bob is such a jerk. jerk. All right, so the we all agree this is a pretty cool experience, right? It reminds us of adventure games, choose your adventure books, RPGs, um, but it's not maybe perfect. What don't you like about the game? I mean, we had, I feel like we had very uneven experiences. Like uh, I remember the very first time we <clears> played it, we were, I feel like really excited and we were having a lot of fun. In the second session, I felt like this is when we got really bogged down in combat, but we were also playing it wrong, so I don't want to blame the game for that. But I just remember, even after that, when we're playing it right, there are certain areas, um, I feel almost like with adventure games, when adventure games sometimes have these sequences where there's a lot of combat, or a lot of action, they can really bog down and become really tedious. And um, 
I, I, I never felt the game was at its best when we were doing a lot of like one of those long hall combat rooms where just tons mm -hmm. of stuff. I always yeah. felt like uh, this is just like it kind of it's like the pacing is slowing down and it feels like it's just beating us up and I don't feel like I'm having that, that clever discussion about where to go next or all mm -hmm. the things that I like about the game aren't happening. So I, for me personally, the combat was not the strongest part. I love so much about the adventure aspect of like the flipping the cards and finding out what the story is and the puzzles. It's just there's like I almost didn't like the game of it if that makes <laughs> sense like yeah. the act of like moving the time and the combat and the fact that between you and me we like we would argue not argue but like discuss over like how these skull things work like you roll it and you check like because the way the combat work is not like most dice rolling combat games where you just kind of like you take your attack and then you minus your health it's not like that. It's like this weird convoluted system. And then when you when you get into like the different scenarios, you get like these magic points and like all these other things. And like some of the sh some of the things have like hearts on them and some of them have other things. And you're like, I just wanted it to be simpler. Like, why does this have yeah. to be so confusing when the core game is so fun? I don't want to fight. I just want to explore. It, and it's weird because it's not complicated like, say, a D&D &D or Pathfinder, yeah. right? Where... Like, okay, there's skill checks and there's armor class and there's bonuses and things like that. It's it's sort of straightforward and not at the same time. Yeah. I think but it removes, the, I think you're right. Like, the D&D &D systems, like, yeah, like you said, you have to roll, like, against some of the skills and then you roll, like, for damage and things like that. I feel like that gets into a territory where it can be really fun because, like, you're rolling dice all the time and you're like, oh, man, I, just, you know, sucked at that roll or whatever it is. Whereas this, it's so, it's convoluted in an unfun way. And then when you actually do rolls to resolve your combat, it's it's always disappointing for some reason, or like I don't know, I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just... weird because it's it wants to be simple <clears throat> for the reason you just brought up of like not being too D and D, but it's almost like in trying to be simple, it's almost complicated in the way that they designed it. I will say one other criticism is the fact that you lose every time, so you can't win in one run. I don't think it's possible. Yeah. Um, and when you when you die or die when you where time runs out, you get rid of all of the items that you've collected thus far, and that is one of my least most favorite. Of them. Yeah, most of them. Like we get to keep one. Like you know. Yeah, they have a something. special symbol. Yeah, on they them. have a special symbol. Like that is one reason. Like that is that's of course the reason that's to, why you to take, take all the notes. notes. Yeah. Right, but I really don't like backtracking like that. That is yeah. really so, tedious to me, and I and I think like that works against a lot of the charms of the game. This reminds me of when I play uh, a video game and I'm like really into the story. Like, let's, I'm just going to give an example of Bioshock, right? Like when I played Bioshock, I was so immersed in the story that I would literally walk around an area after all the, I killed all the enemies and just look at everything because I, I just wanted to know like every bit of the story. And if the game was getting too hard, I'll just like move it down to easy because mm -hmm. I don't want the combat yeah. and the mechanics to get in the way of me enjoying the experience, the immersiveness and the story. And I felt like when we were playing this, I wanted to turn on easy mode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I just wanted to like, you know what, let's just put our, our time to 60 and then mm -hmm. like, let's not worry about like the time and let's just like do a full run and not have to worry about losing all your items yeah. or like having to go through this hallway hallway of like enemies again the ending of all of our sessions have been kind of messy because yeah. i feel like we did one game we just got killed another game we did had another experience third game we got we either solved it or we got so close that we're like you know we would just we would just solve this in like one move if we were to do it again so we yeah. we kind of fudged the ending you yeah know? I, I don't remember exactly but i feel like that at least happened once yeah. and i feel like that's a big tuning problem because if you if you have that experience where like, okay, we've done it twice and lost, but now we know exactly what to do. Bam, 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 we get to the end and you just nail it. You feel like everything was, was working. But if it was right, you get to the end and then you have this long combat thing and, and one of your guys dies and you run out of time. Are you really going to set it all up again and do it again? Because you know what's going to happen. Let's yeah. 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 I feel like it gets a little messy in the end there. Yeah. I, I feel like what this game needs is some sort of like continue mechanic or save point or checkpoint. Yeah. Like in a video game. To where, like, mm -hmm. like you were just describing, like, we do all these things. We know where we're supposed to go. We know we're supposed to not talk to this person. Let's just start the scenario from that section and move on. 
Yeah, and the thing is, like, we're time travelers. That should be theoretically yeah. possible. Yeah, time travelers. <laughs> what are you looking at me for? I'm not Can't the designer. Come on. Come on, I mean, shoe. I think they thought of that and that they, they put that mark on some things. Those are checkpoints in a way, right? Yeah. That, oh, that oh. is like a checkpoint. you got to keep that card. Yeah. You just kind of wish it was on everything. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's tough for me because I really like the game, but I feel like it's like a video game company with the DLC where it's like, we'll give you this really cool experience that's really short, but you can spend a lot of money and we'll give you some other even cooler scenarios at a much lower price. But to me, 30 bucks is quite pricey for one of these. Yeah. Even though there, this is a lot of content, it just it just seems like a game where, like like you just said earlier, you have to like chip in with your friends yeah. because I just can't justify spending this much money on a game. You guys didn't chip in for anything. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it's our most valuable resource. Although, although I am, I got some money now. As you learn from this game, our most valuable resource is time. <laughs> yeah. And that is what we've given you. We're going to go to our conclusions now. And then everyone's going to get, grab a D20. <clears throat> oh, boy. And that's how many words you get to say as your final conclusion. Oh, no. This Dude. is so stressful. Oh, Maybe boy. you get stressed at every. You might roll one. You might roll wrong. one. We did roll, someone rolled a 20. Eight. Uh, a nine. So you got eight. Eight. Nine. 17. Oh, 17. Boy. 13. I'm just keep talking. All right. So write down on your pads of paper that many words and hey, then we'll. Pads of paper. What pads of paper? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who had the most here? I have 17. Who had, who had, what do you guys have? I have 13. I have nine. All right, Tim, uh, what were your final thoughts? Time stories in 17 words. Here we go. Clever system, great presentation, exploration, and the uncovering mysteries is fun, combat, tedious, wish it were an app. <laughs> oh, good job. Gorgeous art, cool system, variety and expansions, recommended if you're willing to spend. And then this is, I ran out of words. Did you draw an emoticon for that? <laughs> I didn't have enough words. What's the? This is not spend time. It's. And All time, right. honestly. And time, yeah. All right, who's next? Okay. Um, I guess. <laughs> just dropping my tokens down in this crack. Sorry. Um, so I guess I'm, because you have eight? So I'm nine. Okay. I said, uh, fun game that could use less game. Okay, bye. <laughs> See, you had extra words. You just no. totally burned those, those last yeah, two words. You, you, you want it to be polite. <laughs> you, you give one of those to Shu so you can say what you so, want so to spend. So what this means. No one yeah. will know. What does this mean? ka It's one word. <laughs> Cheddar. Okay. Yeah. Immersive, beautiful, intriguing mysteries, ruinous item loss, and combat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to count the three, and on three, uh, we're going to vote. Okay, yeah. so what did I say? It's two thumbs up, uh, one thumb up. Uh, 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 Jesus. Two thumbs I up. think we should be excluded because we're game developers and we don't pass judgment on other That's games. True. You gotta vote. It's you guys are you professional. Whoa, you, you whoa, already whoa. signed up for the show. It's way too late. <laughs> if it's unanimous that we all love it, it gets yeah. a platinum award from the Going Analog Show. It okay. hasn't happened yet. Uh, this means you love it. This means you like it. And thumbs down means you're just completely ambivalent. You're just like, meh, to even you don't like it. All right? So, on three, give us your vote. Nah. One, two, three. Right. <laughs> oh. Am I the, oh. But don't change your vote based on his vote. Said, oh. I, I, I'm a game developer who's really nice, and I don't want to give my real opinion. <laughs> Any game that's made is a miracle. I literally like the system. I just It's more like my personal feeling of, like, yeah. like what I do, I want to finish this, or do I want to go play one of these games? I, I feel like that's just yeah, honest I, I that. spent a lot of time being very, very frustrated with this game, even though I, like, really wanted to love it. Um, there were times when it was just like, come on, game, come on, let Poor us game. enjoy you, please. So we want to love <laughs> I do you. admire it. Yeah, I lot. do admire it very much. Um, it's not, that's why I wanted to say I, I, there is there is stuff I like about it, but um, I was very frustrated a lot yeah. playing it. No, we appreciate your honesty, mm -hmm. and that was good. And it's I think it's all fair, everything we've said. We know what we're talking about here. Yeah, it's also all fair. All right, so, uh, cool. Thanks very much for your time, and... Let's uh, check out some letters from Sean Beatty. We're back with another terrific edition of Ask Sean Baby. All right, uh, the first question here comes from uh, Cassandra E. She says, how do you prevent friends from fighting over favorite colors? Then parenthetically, she says, this seems to be more common as I get older, not as much when I was younger. 
Uh, okay. Uh, when my daughter uh, is upset about a problem like this, what I like to do is I, I put her over one shoulder and then I, I pat her on the back until milk squirts out of her face. And I think uh, maybe that's something you could use with your stupid ass friends who fuss about colors. Well, we've got one here from Dan H. He says, you get to be passive aggressive for a bit. Thanks, Dan H. What would you like to tell our, I mean your, friends to start or stop doing to make board game sessions more fun for everyone? It's a great question. I'd love for people to be smarter, but whatever, that's a magic fantasy world. One thing they could fix, I hate assholes that run around taking candid pictures of everybody and putting them on Facebook. Like, like you're playing a board game. Like, you're never gonna look more bored or unhappy. You're like, oh, here's the back of my head while I'm throwing some dice. Tell everyone on the fucking internet that's what I did today. They're gonna think that's cool. But you could be like, hey, everybody, smile at the camera. And you're like, yay, we're playing Tyrants of Underdark. And like, whatever, you're having a nice time you're with your friends. Maybe you're a bunch of nerds, but like, it's happy. You're spreading some positive energy. If they're looking at the side of my head while I'm reading a rule book, I don't want people to think I spent my day like that. It's a fucking Facebook. Like, here's a picture of me surfing. Here's a picture of me making out with a duck. That's the thing I'm into. And people look at that and they're like, that's a guy with some fucking interesting hobbies. And we're playing Tyrants of Underdark. They're like, get a life.